Good afternoon. I'm Father David. Thank you for joining me today for Disciple Time as we're looking at wellness and witness. Now, shortly before the last time my father came out to visit me, he sent me the family Bible. And I have a picture of it here, which doesn't do it any justice. I'll show you the Bible in a minute. But this Bible has been in my family for 147 years. It was printed in 1876, I believe. So it's a fragile Bible. It has a wooden cover. And I just want to show you what that looks like because it's really massive. There it is right there. And you can see just how thick that thing is. And it has names of family members and marriages and children and all this stuff in it. But one of the things I really love about it is it's filled with classical artwork and paintings. And so I took a couple pictures to show you what I'm talking about. In the middle there, you see it has this family temperance pledge. And this was a pledge people took in the United States way back when they were making a pledge to abstain from alcohol. They would write their names down in that. To the left, you see there's an, the angel of Revelation depicted and then on the right another beautiful drawing of Christ as the good shepherd and so the Bible is filled with stuff like that maybe you have an old Bible that has some really neat stuff like this in it but I really like the Bibles that have maps in them because one of the things that that helps me do is it helps me give a perspective on where these events in the Bible took place and it kind of helps me see the reality that these events did in fact take place somewhere in time and space in the world that we live in. And, and that came to my mind today as I was reading the gospel reading from John. So we see in this gospel reading where there was this person that was beside the pool, and it says here in John 5, 2 through 3 and 5, Now there is in Jerusalem at the sheep gate a pool called in Hebrew Bethesda with five porticos, in these lay a large number of ill, blind, lame, and crippled. One man was there who had been ill for 38 years. Now, some of your Bibles, depending on what version you're using, will have verse 2, 3, and then verse 5, and it'll skip verse 4. I put verse 4 down here because sometimes it's helped people understand the story. There's a little bit of debate about which manuscripts had verse 4 in the original Greek and which ones didn't. But this is what that verse says. If you follow it along from verse 3, it says, In these lay a large number of ill, blind, and lame, and crippled. For an angel of the Lord came from time to time and stirred up the water. And the first person to step in after the water was stirred was healed for whatever disease they had. And so there was this belief, whether or not it came from verse 4 here or not, that all these ill people were around this pool at Bethesda by the Sheep Gate, because some kind of healing was thought to occur there if you got into these waters at a certain time. And as I read that, I thought, wow, I wonder where the sheep gate is, and I wonder where this pool of Bethesda is. And so I got into one of the maps in that are connected with the Bible, and I, I found this, and I wanted to share it with you. So if this is the temple in Jerusalem, and this is the Temple Mount area, this sheep gate is right off of this. And then if you follow this road down outside the sheep gate, you will come to these pools, the pools of Bethesda. Some people call them the sheep's pools. So if you are reading about them. And I like this other drawing also of it because you kind of see some of the area that sheep might have been even grazing around these areas. So here's the sheep gate in this depiction and the road that comes down to these pools of Bethesda. Now, if you go to Jerusalem, I figure you can just go right to these places and see this in person, and then that would really bring this gospel story to life in a very unique way. And so this is why I like to think about, you know, where is this at in Jerusalem? Where is this at maybe in the Middle East or whatever? And it helps give me an idea. But I don't want to lose focus of the importance of what's happening here, because what's happening is Nothing short of a miracle for this man that's beside the pool. So what is the problem? Why is he there for so long? Why was he there for 38 years? Well, we find out why in the dialogue that follows here in John chapter 4, and that should read verse 6 through 9, not verse 4. But here in verse 6, it says, When Jesus saw him lying there 
and knew that he had been ill for a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be well? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. While I am on my way, someone else gets down there before me. And Jesus said to him, Rise up, take your mat and walk. Immediately the man became well, took up his mat and walked. So you see there that as you followed this dialogue out, there was a belief that when the water was stirred, whoever was first to go in the water received that healing. There's that missing verse from a lot of versions of the Bible about there being an angel involved in that. But whether you believe it was an angel or not, doesn't really matter. The point is... People were gathered up around this, and it wasn't just anybody that was gathered up around this pool. It was a bunch of people that were crippled, lame, had all kinds of disease, and they were all kind of around this pool waiting for this miracle to happen so they could get down in it and receive healing. And this guy had been there for 38 years, but never been able to get down there because he was crippled. And I think the monumental question that Jesus asked this guy is, do you want to be well? I mean, the way that we answer that question is going to determine a lot of what comes next. Because the truth is, if we're suffering from some kind of illness, whether it's physical, whether it's mental, whether it's emotional, or whether it's spiritual, if we don't want to be well, then we're never going to take any steps to achieve wellness in that situation. And I'll give you an example. I had a hernia not too long ago. And guess what? The hernia stayed until I actually went to the doctor and had it surgically fixed. And now it's fixed. But I had to want to be well bad enough to go to the hospital and actually go through that surgery. And this is an important thing, okay? Because when we talk about wellness, we need to understand that there's steps that we need to take. And sometimes those steps are spiritual. If we think about our relationship with God and the transformation that comes from having a relationship with God, we need to take steps towards the Lord Jesus Christ. If we're thinking about physical stuff like a broken arm or some surgery we need, we got to take steps to do that. We got to take real life steps to see those healings. And so it really just brought it to my attention. And this week, as we're going through the Chosen series, we're asking that question, what does it mean to be chosen? And the answer is, you are a witness. So when we think about witnessing and the wellness that we're seeing Jesus is bringing to people and all these miraculous healings, let's not miss that. Let's not miss what Jesus can accomplish in our lives through that transforming grace as we enter into relationships with him. And so what's the application for the journey? Well, it's this. And there's two applications this week. One, where do I need to experience healing? And what steps might I take to achieve it? That's the first thing. And that's like a real life question, right? And then the second one is equally important is, as one who is chosen and called to be a witness, how can I help others experiencing healing? How can I help others experience healing? Whether it's spiritual, through a relationship with Christ, whether it's I identify somebody needs some physical help and need to get them to the doctor, whatever the case may be. Let's not lay around the pool for 38 years. Let's get well. Well, thank you for joining me today. I'm Father David. I hope to see you next week.